Hello everyone. This is the presentation of my final project. My project is to help my student who has autism to generalize the skills of using a zipper on different objects. First, I would like to introduce my participant. KP, he is a five years old boy who has, um, who has been diagnosed with autism. He's on the most severe end of the spectrum and he needs significant support in everyday life and has deficits in communication and social interactions. He can say simple words like all done and meant for his something that he liked, uh, for example, water or candy. And he's in potty train now. So the reason why I choose a zipper uh, as my project is because zippers are almost everywhere in everyday life. For example, like on a coat or on a lunch box or um, on a bag. Learning to use zipper is an important life skill and it gives us access to preferred item and simplify the task. And it can also promote independence and boot up a kid's self-esteem and earn himself freedom from adult supervision. The other important reason is KP is in potty training now. If he can zip and unzip his pants, he can go to the toilet without the assistance of a caregiver. Here is the list of literature that I read for my project. The first one is using multiple exemplar training to teach a generalized repertoire of sharing to children with autism. In his research, the researcher used multiple exemplar in four different categories, including art material, snacks, toys, and gym materials to teach sharing to a children with autism. The second journal, Training and Generalize of Effective Behavior Displayed by Youth with Autism. In this research, um, the, re the research team used treatment consistent of modeling, prompting, and reinforcement to promote generalizations, which is something that's similar to some strategy that's similar to what I have used in my research. In this journal, the research teams use multiple exemplar training to teach empathy skills to children with autism. They help children identify that um, different actions or facial expressions means the same feelings. For example, if you clap hands, that means you're happy. And if you smile, that means you are happy too. Um, they use multiple exemplar training to teach empathetic responding to two children with autism and the result is very good. And the last journal is an implicit technology of generalizations from Bear. In this journal, Bear lists several strategies that we can use to teach generalization. And I choose um, using sufficient exemplar to train um, my student because I believe that um, he had the basic skills in using a zipper. He just need to practice it on different objects to generalize his skills. Baseline data was collected in April for three days. It shows that KP can sip and then sip his lunch bath independently. Also, he can zip his clothes with help. The teaching strategy we will use in this research is serial multiple exemplar training. Multiple exemplar were targeted at the outset of training. The reason why we use multiple exemplar training is because zipper on different objects require different skills to zip and unzip. With more um, target, um, with more exemplar form training, KP will generalize his skills in using zipper. A kid size backpack was selected for use in post-treatment generaliz generalizations poll. KP has two learning goals to zip and unzip a zipper on different objects. 
we train one target for each goal at a time. Once a target has been mastered, a new target will be introduced to KP. During the training phase, therapists use most to least pumping and reinforcement to promote generalizations. For the first learning goal to zipper zipper, we have three different targets. First, we'll teach KP to zip a zipper pencil pouch, and then we'll teach him to zip his backpack, and the third target is his cloth. And after three targets, we'll use a different kid size backpack to um, uh, see if KP can generalize and zip a zipper on the backpack. It is the same as the second learning goal to unzip. It also has three targets and we'll use a kid size backpack for the post treatment generalization probe. To teach KP how to zip and zip a backpack, first before the session, therapist will put and reinforces into the pencil pouch or the backpack. And then the therapist will deliver the instruction unzip pencil pouch or unzip backpack. And the KP has to respond by um, unzipping the backpack. And then the therapist will give him a verbal praise like good job. And then the therapist can deliver the reinforcers for a correct independent or best response. And the reinforcement schedule is fixed ratio one. To teach KP how to zip a zipper on different objects, before the SD, therapist will pick and reinforces or preferred activities for KP and then remind him zip that path first, then if KP can respond correctly, therapists will give them verbal praise for every correct independent or best response and the reinforcers. The reinforcement schedule is fixed ratio one. We use the following error correction procedure when KP does not respond or respond incorrectly. First, we'll deliver vocal feedback try again and then we'll represent the materials and then and the SD with pumps to prevent error. We provide pumps if KP needs assistance. We, we use most to least pumping strategy for new non-master skills and systematically fade down to lower level pumps as the student master the skill. And the pumping sequence is full physical assistant, and then partial physical, and then modeling, and then gestural and verbal. For the research design, we use delayed multiple baseline design, and data collected for the first response given during the ABA sessions. KP has five charts for each target in each session. And the mastery criteria is each target will be considered master when daily independent responding is at 80% for that target for three consecutive days. After KP master a target, we'll put the master target in maintenance and move on to the next target. And data graph as the numbers of independents respond per week using Excel to keep track of the progress of generalizations. Here is the result of KP's generalization plan so far. We can see that the first three days um, is the baseline data collections and he cannot, he give no independent response. And then after the three day on the session four, five and six, still he cannot do it. But later for the next, for the session six to 13, it showed that um, the percentage of independence response is increasing. Um, until so far, KP hasn't mastered one target yet, but um, the result is quite 
um, it showed that he's making progress, and I believe that we can move on to target two maybe in the next few sessions. Overall, KP is making progress in um, learning to use the zipper because the tan of the graph is gradually increasing. But um, the learning process take longer time than I expected. Um, the main reason is because the type of the zipper is different. I, we know that he can zip and unzip his, lun his lunch bag. And the type of the zipper on his lunch bag, um, it attached another tiny piece of cloth on it so that it is a little bit easier for him to zip and unzip. And the zipper on the pencil pouch um, has nothing attached on it, so he need to really use his fingers to grip the zippers to zip and unzip, and he takes longer time to learn how to use it. Overall, KP is making progress in learning to use zippers on different objects because the tan of the graph is gradually increasing, but his learning process is slower than we expected. The main reason is because the type of the zipper we know that he, he can zip and unzip is different from the target. From the picture on the left, it shows that the zippers on his lunch bag has a piece of fabric attached to it, which, which help him make it easier to zip and unzip. But the pencil pouch, it doesn't have the fabric attached to it, so he really need to have a, a better fine motor skills to zip and unzip the pencil pouch. In future, um, in picking the target, we'll be more careful and make sure that um, the target has uh, some similar features, for example, a similar kinds of zippers on the on the objects to make sure that uh, he um, uh, that is our plan to help him generalize um, his skills. In future, we suggest that researcher can use concurrent training method to train a student to generalize his skills. Here is an article about the effects of serial and concurrent training on acquisition and generalizations. The research um, evaluated the two different methods, serial and concurrent training. Um, participants wish the mastery criteria in fewer training sessions using the concurrent methods of presentation than the serial methods. And the concurrent methods also result in greater generalization to untrained examples. In future, we suggest people can use the concurrent training method in training the acquisitions and generalizations. The article lists below um, effects of serials and concurrent training on acquisitions and generalization compared to different methods, the serial training method and the concurrent training method. The concurrent training method is a method that um, presents multiple targets at the same time um, to train generalization. And the results show that the participants reach the mastery criteria in fewer training sessions using the concurrent methods of presentation than the serial method. Um, so maybe next time or in future when I'm teaching students to generalize his skills, um, we will try to like present multiple targets to him at the same time. Um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.